Hello, my name is Dr. Omide and I'm going to um, briefly discuss the histology of the pancreas um, in this lecture series. So remember, the pancreas is both an exocrine and endocrine gland that is located on the C-shaped um, part of the duodenum and it has a head, a neck, an uncinate process, the body and a tail that is located at the hilum of the spleen. So the exocrine part of the pancreas um, is a serous gland and it usually synthesizes and thereafter secretes the enzymes into the duodenum. Remember the common bile duct together with the main pancreatic duct, they open at the ampule of vata that's located on the posterior medial surface of the second part of the duodenum that's where the pancreas will drain its contents. So, and this mainly contains enzymes that are essential for digestion that takes place in the small intestines. So the exocrine pancreas secretes enzymes and enzymes are protein. So the cells of the exocrine pancreas have features of a protein synthesizing cell, which we said are prominent, um, large prominent nucleus, prominent and chromatic nucleolus, abundant um, rough endoplasmic reticulum, abundant ribosomes and Golgi apparatus, as well as um, zymogenic cytoplasmic granules. Now, remember proteins are synthesized in the ribosomes and rough endoplasmic reticulum, and they enter the Golgi apparatus to undergo post-translational modification before they are transported. So Golgi apparatus carries post-translational modification and transportation of the proteins. What do I mean by post-translational modification? Where you probably add a, a carbohydrate to the protein to be a glycoprotein or you add a lipid for it to become a lipoprotein and so on and so forth. So this image just shows you the uh, presence of secretory um, granules within the cells but we'll look at better um, image such as this. So this shows you the histology of the pancreas. So remember, the pancreas is both exocrine and endocrine. So the duct staining cells with prominent nuclei, these are the exocrine pancreas that produce the enzymes. And what you see as islands here, these are what you call the islets of Langerhans, and these are the um, endocrine portion of the pancreas gland. So the pancreas has an outer capsule, and this capsule sends in septa that divides the gland into lobules, and you can see the septa here, and the septa carries with it neurovascular structures. Then the incomplete lobules of the pancreas contain an exocrine pancreas, which are duct staining cells with features of protein synthesizing cells, which you need to mention them, and interspersed between the exocrine cells, we have the Islets, the islands of light staining cell, which are the angahans containing the endocrine portions of the pancreas gland. Remember, since it's an, an exocrine gland, there will be presence of ducts. Exocrine means you secrete secretion through ducts, and since it's an endocrine gland, the islet portions will have neurovascular structures because you release um, secretions directly into blood. Now, um, you can appreciate that, islet, lighter staining cells, an island of lighter staining cells interspersed in darker staining exocrine pancreas and presence of capillaries in between because endocrine releases um, secretions directly into blood. So this islet of Langerhan contains different cells. You have alpha cells that produce glucagon, beta cells that produce insulin, delta cells that produce somatostatin, G cells that produce gastrin, you have PP cells that produce pancreatic polypeptide. So those are the types of cells in an islet of Langerhans. Now, so you can appreciate they've labeled alpha, beta, presence of capillaries, and this islet, of course, it's secluded from the exocrine pancreas by a capsule. So there's a capsule around it that um, um, the, the islet of Langerhans. Now, the exocrine pancreatic cells are arranged in what you call a sinus. They're called a sinus cells. So 
there's presence of acinar cells. The exocrine pulp is made up of acinar cells and central acinar cells, which we shall discuss. So appreciate the exocrine pancreas containing acinar cells, which are secretory cells with features of protein synthesizing cells, large prominent nucleus and chromatic nucleoli, abundant ribosomes, graph endoplasmic reticulum and Golgi apparatus. The, these ribosomes and graph endoplasmic reticulum are basal. Then above the nuclei on the apical surfaces of the cells, you have the zymogenic granules containing the, the enzymes that have been secreted. Then remember, we also have um, the island of light staining cells with connective tissue around it. So, and capillaries because it's an endocrine um, uh, gland or endocrine portion of the pancreas gland. Since it's the exocrine portion, you'll see ducts because you have to release um, secretions into the ducts. And remember, exocrine glands, the ducts are lined by simple cuboidal epithelium. So the pancreas has an endocrine component that will secrete hormones such as insulin and glucagon, which regulate glucose. How do they regulate glucose? When blood sugar is high, insulin is produced by the beta cells of the pancreas. It is released into blood and it will um, get to the receptors. Receptors of insulin are mainly on skeletal muscle, fats or adipose, and the liver. So when insulin gets to these receptors, it will tell these organs to store the high glucose that is in blood. So when glucose in blood is high, after a meal, glucose is high. Beta cells of the pancreas produce insulin. Insulin will bind onto its receptors on skeletal muscle, adipose, and liver to make them pick up the glucose from blood and store the glucose either in form of glycogen or in form of fat. When blood sugar level is low, alpha cells of the pancreas will produce glucagon. When blood sugar is low, alpha cells of the pancreas will produce glucagon, and this glucagon will go to the liver and make the liver to break down glucose in form of glycogenolysis or gluconeogenesis. Therefore, you form glucose, and the glucose will be released into blood to raise the blood sugar level. Other um, um, hormones produced by the pancreas, we have pancreatic polypeptide produced by the PP cells and the somatostatin produced by the delta cells. Somatostatin is basically an inhibitory hormone. So it will inhibit peristalsis of the GI, inhibits release of bile from the gallbladder. It's an inhibitory hormone. So the exocrine pancreas forms bulk of the gland. It secretes enzymes in inside uh, enzyme-rich alkaline fluid and this will be released into the duodenum via the pancreatic duct as we have said. So the exocrine pancreas is made up of um, cells which we call acinar cells that eventually open into the main pancreatic duct. So you can appreciate ducts here. In the, this is a serous cell, an acinar cell. We usually say they're pyramidal in shape. You can appreciate that. Acinar cells are pyramidal in shape with basal rough endoplasmic and Golgi, rough endoplasmic and ribosomes, while on the apical, you have the zymogenic granules containing the, the, the enzymes. You can see the secretory granules. And these are the ducts lined by simple cuboidal epithelium. This shows you the picture of the exocrine pancreas. So what we are saying is that you have the acinar cells. These are what we're referring to acinar cells. These are pyramidal, protein synthesizing cells with a large nucleus, large prominent nucleolus, okay, and chromatic nucleus, basal rough endoplasmic reticulum and ribosomes, and apical secretory or zymogenic granules containing the enzymes. So they are pyramidal in shape with the apices facing inwards. You can see the ap apical surfaces of the cells are converging inwards. So acinar cells that will line the duct. Each uh, group of acinar cells their secretions will be drained by an intercalated duct. But the assigner, the lining of the duct that is inside the assigners, that's what we call the central assigner cells. So when they ask you to describe an exocrine pancreas, you need to describe this. Okay? So assigner cells with features of protein synthesizing cell, you can even draw it, and it's drained by an intercalated duct. 
and the cells that line the intercalated ducts that are inside the assigner, we call them central assigner cells. So the intercalated duct begins in the assigners as central assigner cells. So you have pyramidal cells lying on a basement membrane. They contain a large and chromatic nucleus with a prominent nucleolus, basal rough endoplasmic reticulum and ribosomes, and apical thermogenic granules containing the enzymes that are secreted. And the assigners, assigners is drained by an intercalated duct, line duct that is inside the assigners where the intercalated duct begins. We call them the central assigner cells. So the exocrine pancreas um, has assigner cells that are basophilic and they have subnuclear cytoplasm. So they're basophilic in the portion of the cytoplasm below the nucleus and acidophilic apical cytoplasm. Why are the apices acidophilic? Because of the homogenic granules, while the bases of the cells are basophilic. So th that, that's how you describe an assigner cell. Basophilic ba uh, bases below the nuclei because of rough endoplasmic reticulum and um, ribosomes where protein is being synthesized. And the apices are acidophilic because of the zymogenic granules containing the enzymes. So which enzymes are in the, uh, secreted by the pancreas? Trypsinogen, pepsinogen, procarboxypeptidase, okay? And this usually digests proteins. Then we also have amylases. Amylase digests carbohydrates. The pancreas also produces lipases that will digest lipids. There is the presence of uh, deoxyribonuclease and ribonuclease. And this aid in the digestion of nucleic acids. Deoxyribonuclease and ribonuclease help with the digestion of nucleic acids. So these are the enzymes produced by the uh, pancreas. And remember, they're usually produced in an inactive form and later they will be activated. Thank you very much.